Hi everybody and welcome to another video. This time I am going to be drawing this gorgeous Vimarana puppy. I'm going to share with you all of the elements, working with pastel mat, getting that beautiful sort of pinky purpley colour. Um, and we're going to be starting today on the eye and I'm going to talk you through the different colours and how I create um, lovely realistic eyes. So if any of you have seen a tutorial of mine before, you will know that when I start a portrait, I always start with the eyes. Um, and when I start with the eyes, I always start with the outside of the eye first. I never start with just the eyeball. Um, and for me, there's a really, really good reason for that. It means that I can get the shape, I can get the size, um, I can get all of that correct, and I can get a little bit of form around the eye before I start to bring the eyeball in. I find... Um, if I just do the eyeball on its own, it can look very strange. Um, it can take on the form of, I don't know, half the time it looks like a, a weird bird or something like that when I've just got done the eyeball. So I tend to do all of the outside area first. It helps me um, sort of with my, my brain. It helps my brain <laughs> to kind of really understand what it is that I'm drawing. Um, you know, it's very strange. It's like... When you look up at the clouds and you see sort of certain cloud formations and they make pictures or you look at a house and it looks like it's got a face. The same is exactly the same when you look at um, or when I look at an eyeball that's just been done on its own. It can kind of take on the form of like a, I don't know, a strange bird or something like that. So I always do the uh, outside first, get all of that correct. Um, you know, I get a bit of the form in there, a little bit of the um, eyelid. Uh, and then once I've got that and I've got the structure correct, then I can start to work on the eyeball area. I find working with polychromos um, purely on the eyes is a really really good process for me. Um, they are less opaque so they're a little bit more translucent than the other brands and it means that I can really really get some beautiful layering in there where the colours sort of sit over the top of each other and they show through. Now with eyes um, particularly horse and dog eyes, um, cat eyes as well I guess, the pupil area, I always 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 start with uh, polychromos dark indigo um, and that kind of goes in very very lightly before I start anything else so the pupil area goes in first, I then get a very light um, layer of colour in on the iris area and then I come back in again you can see like I'm doing now and really darken up around the eyes it's very important to get your darks dark enough um, and eyes particularly on a dog like this um, around the eye area tends to be one of the darkest areas in your piece um, I mean we've got some other really dark areas in here as well around the eye, around the ears but around the eyes that do tend to be very very dark so getting those really really dark darks in is incredibly important um, with eyes again i know when i talked about it in the in the cat video um getting the shadows in there is going to be a really important part of creating the eye as well and creating that sort of depth and an emotion in there too um with this particular eye it looks quite scary because of the color um but actually a little bit of that earth green uh, a little bit of uh, sort of warm greys in there. I think this is warm grey four um, in on the um, on the on the iris area there, and then sort of like just pin picking out little tiny areas of highlight. It's quite a simple eye, um, you know, with it being sort of a, a consistent colour. Um, so I think the catch lights are really really important. So we've got one quite bright catch light, and then we have other catch lights up at the top left and at the bottom right where it's just sort of like um it's like a minty green color and all that all i've done there is i've just nipped it out with a uh, putty eraser and those little tiny nuances within an eye are what is going to give you some really lovely character and the feedback i get about my animals eyes is that you know they really do um look real they really do sort of like have soul in them and I, I honestly believe that it's due to the translucency of the pencils that i'm using and also adding in those sort of like little character um catch lights in there too so the vimarana color really is very very unique um it's this sort of lovely purpley pinky bluey color and trying to get that color with with, with any medium it means that you've got a, it's a little bit of trial and error i think 
um, you know, mixing a few different colours together to sort of try and find that, that perfect match. Um, now, on this particular piece, I've used some Pablos in here and I've used some uh, Luminance and some Lightfast as well, actually. <clears throat> so there are some great colours in both ranges. The Lightfast, um, I think I use some of the Fossil Grey, which is a really, really fabulous pinky grey. And then we've got these beiges in the... Um, the, the Pablo range and it's it's about mixing these different colors to sort of get that optimum sort of pinky purpley shade so using the granite rose those those light pinky shades in with sort of more gray colors is um is what's going to kind of work and the other thing as well is using those lighter colors in over the top of these other more stronger colors on the pastel mat means that you can really really get some lovely um smooth tones in there uh, you know, people talk about pastel mat needing like hundreds and thousands and millions of layers. And actually, you can see from this, you don't need that. I'm working on the pastel mat board. So, yes, it is a little bit smoother. But, um, you know, I can get away with, you know, one or two layers in places if I need to. So just gently adding, adding the layers, coming in and just adding a little bit of detail. I don't work over an entire area. I tend to work in sections, which works much better for me and my brain. Um, and I tend to sort of get quite a lot of work done around the eye so that I get a really, really good feeling for a piece and then sort of move back up and, and, and onto the top of the head and work down. With pastel mat, I, I feel is really, really key to use very, very light pressure. So using these lighter colours first and then building your darker colours in on the top, using colours to help smooth in between the layers. So if you're new to pastel mat and you put your first colours down, it will look very grainy. It, and that's purely down to the tooth of the, the, the paper, the tooth of the surface. Um, and actually, we need to learn to love that graininess because it means that we have the... Um, the option if we want to really put a huge amount of layers in there. The only time really that I would use a, a lot of layers is in sort of like a relatively tricky um, area. So maybe where there's an awful lot of detail or where I'm kind of struggling to sort of get the form or something like that. I might use a, a, a lot more layers than I would, um, you know, on sort of like like around the eye on these softer areas. Um, but usually I would say maybe, I don't know, 10 layers. Um, I mean, it's tricky sometimes because when you're creating something like this you don't really sit and count the layers up but I know that I don't add a huge amount of layers and I know that you don't need to add a huge amount of layers um you know if you don't want to so if you are new to pastel mat don't sort of think you have to add thousands of layers every time you're drawing because you, you honestly don't it's about using your pencils really really cleverly um so there are certain um pencils that are really 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 useful for um smoothing and blending so you have the polychromos warm gray two you have the uh, polychromos cold gray one uh, you have uh, pablo granite rose you have pablo light gray there are there are quite a few different pencils that are really very soft um, and they are going to allow you to kind of smooth over um, you know any of those grainy layers to sort of really help you so that's pretty much it for this uh, part of the Vimarana. Um, I'm going to be coming and sharing more of the colour tips with you and drawing the fur and everything. So um, yes, I'll catch you next time. Hi everyone, thanks for watching this video and I really hope you found it useful and have learnt something new. If you have any questions or queries, please feel free to leave me a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button below and if you'd like to find more tutorials filmed in real time with loads of detail and full step-by-step -step instructions, you can join my Patreon for just £5 a month. You can find a link for this in the description below. Hope to see you again soon.